one question that I see all the time, and that I'm sure you people see too, is when you read the R React Native subreddit or you look on Twitter, this question keeps coming up over and over again. Should I use Expo or Bear React Native without Expo? I want to talk about that a little bit now. We want to make this question obsolete. We always want developers to focus on the important parts of their app, not have to pay attention to arcane implementation details. And it hurts the whole React Native ecosystem when one of the first things developers have to do is make a hard choice that they need to do a bunch of research to make well. Instead, we want developers to just use React Native and Expo. And so we've worked hard lately to make it so you can pick and choose any parts of Expo you want to use without any lock-in or baggage or having to use the rest of Expo. Blue Sky is actually a good example of this. The project started out just using the React Native CLI and being a bare React Native project without using anything from Expo. But then a bunch of Expo things were added one by one as needed. They needed Expo Camera for camera functionality, and they needed Expo Web to target the web well, and a bunch of other things too. So now, any React Native project works with Expo modules. Expo modules use JSI, React's native inter React Native's interface for native modules. There's a small library provided by the Expo package called Expo Modules Core. In addition, in an app already using Kotlin and Swift, the marginal size increase is only about 150 kilobytes. Any React Native can use config plugins. Expo introduced config plugins two years ago, and since then, we've seen great adoption from library authors, and there are now over a million weekly downloads of config plugins. Any React Native project can use Expo Prebuild. Expo Prebuild manages and creates your Android and iOS directories for you in projects that don't need to manually configure those files. And any React Native project works with the Expo CLI. You, one thing you might not know is you don't actually need to be using Expo Go to use Expo CLI. You can compile a development build of your own app that includes third-party libraries or your own custom native code. All these community libraries and standards are open source. And now that there's EAS, a set of paid hosted services operated by the Expo team for doing builds and updates and other things, um, all those things work with any React Native project as well. Apps built with EAS include only the native modules they use. Expo CLI, Expo modules, and Prebuild are all optional. Apps can use any combination of these features, whether it's none of them or all of them, and still be built with EAS build. I just explained to you how you can use each part of Expo separately. But there are actually some powerful and magical things that can happen when you combine these Expo tools together. And I want to share one example of that with you. So when you work on a React Native project, you have an iOS directory and an Android directory that contain a bunch of files that you normally only touch if you're changing something about your app's configuration, like setting up blinking URL patterns, writing native code, or installing a native module. Touching anything in either of these directories feels unfamiliar and dangerous and fragile to most React Native developers. For me, I'd say it even feels a little scary. I'm always worried that I'm going to break something by accident. Expo Prebuild fixes that by generating your complete iOS and Android directories for you based on your universal apps configuration files. When you combine Prebuild with config plugins, auto-linking, the Expo Modules API, and app lifecycle events, you get what we call continuous native generation, or CNG for short. The whole here is greater than the sum of its parts. When you use the CLI to pre-build and run your config plugins, your native project files are continuously generated for you. And your app at runtime is set up to work with the application lifecycle events provided by Expo modules. CNG treats your native project files like rendered artifacts. It's kind of like how React renders the DOM for you and keeps it in a consistent and, and correct state. CNG takes care of your native project files, so they're always in sync with your app config. And it does those across different native platforms. And because any React Native app works with each part of CNG, any React Native app can use CNG today. Um, excluding apps that have lots of accumulated custom native code changes spanning their whole Xcode and Android Studio projects, we think almost all React Native apps today should use this pattern. It lets teams move faster and make fewer mistakes and worry about less. This is kind of the whole point of Expo. When you have this vision in your head about an application you want to create, Let's make that dream come to life as easily and as quickly as possible, where you're only worrying about the interesting and important and essential things that make your app unique, not arcane technical details.